Hello up bags, it's Jade. Welcome to The Survival Show. Every single week on a Saturday, I normally deliver you the best in survival games news. Giving you an extra bonus one this week because I had too much to cover already. So let's go with everything you need to know in the world of survival. Leave a like, make sure you're subscribed. If it's a survival game that's come out in the last five years, I've played and covered it on this channel. Fractured Veil vale has gone live with its Kickstarter. You can go ahead and support this game. For $25, you'll get a key to play on their fourth wave. They do have other pledges as well, where obviously if you spend a bit more, it looks like you'll get your key a little bit earlier. I sat down last week with one of the creators of the game and talked all about Fractured Veil. Vale. They showed off the systems, the gameplay, the base building, some of the elements of defense and the mutants, as well as the lush, beautiful world. Set in Hawaii, promising PvE, PvP content. A huge amount of work has gone into this game over the last few years and it does look like they're just using Kickstarter now to get them through the final hurdles. There is going to be a ton of Fractured Veil vale videos and streams going live over the next few days, so I'm sure you're going to see it just flooding everywhere you go. We were actually one of the first YouTube channels to actually show the game off. In fact, pretty much the first, a year ago when I got Kyra on fire, one of my good rat bags and an actual streamer and YouTuber herself, to do an interview with the developers. So it's good to see it's finally here. Fractured Veil vale I like because they've spent a long time developing the game themselves before eventually going onto Kickstarter. In fact, they've done this for a good few years now. End of the day though, they're trying to get to their last few goals to launch it into early access. So Fractured Veil vale is 500 players per world. It's gonna have base building, it's gonna have PVE and PVP content. Pretty much you'll be able to play it the way you wanna play. A man, a dungeons galore, you'll be able to go and explore, get yourself all sorts of loot, explore abandoned mines, sewers, and underbuildings. It's also trying to reduce the kind of griefing that you see in PVP led games. There will be PVP, but there are ways that you will be able to kind of stay away from the majority of that kind of stuff. They've also got big server news where you can transfer to alternate dimensions kind of thing. It's a mix of Daisy, Rust and maybe Dead Island all rolled into one. And it's even got a patrol bot that would literally stream stuff going on to its social media channels. Anytime you're on a server, you may be the star momentarily of a show. I definitely like all the ideas. There's a huge amount of ideas going on here. And I probably think that's the only negative I've got against it is that sometimes it's offering the sky can it deliver on all of them and can it all fit and gel together? I hope so. From what I played, they have definitely thought about relieving some parts of the grind and making some really easy choice game design decisions that just help a lot with survival elements. Things like automatic sorting and gathering and crafting items base defenses that are easy to implement. There's a super enthusiastic and info-led video up on the Kickstarter page from Ryan, the founder of Fractured Veil vale and from Paddle Creek Games, talking about all the plans, everything they want to bring into it and community and stuff. So check it out, link for it will be in the comment section down below. And of course, as we get nearer, I am going to definitely be covering and showing you guys more and more of this kind of stuff and seeing how we get on. As of yet, I don't think they've got too many plans to bring it to console. They are using the power of, obviously, the cloud. So it may be something that potentially could come, but I wouldn't expect it for a good few years if that was ever the case and only next gen only. But yeah, there's a lot to like here for sure. And the fact that they've spent like five years working on this themselves, they've got a really fully fleshed product out here now. It's just about going through the final stages and adding more content. It's definitely got to be one of the most comprehensive Kickstarters I've seen. Loads and loads of information there to digest, loads of stuff to go through. So yeah, give it a shot if you like the sound of Fractured Veil. Vale. The Long Dark is getting close to launch. It's episode four, finally, again. They've been doing these literally like once a year because of the COVID situation last year. I think there was still some other delays, but it does look like it's coming and it's called Fury Then Silence. If you don't know, The Long Dark has been around for like seven years nearly now, and it came out of Alex Access a good few years ago, but missing some story episodes. They've been worked on, religiously but it has taken a while to get these out so it does look like it is going to be finishing up very soon with episode five well underway on the kind of planning stage and it looks like that's going to be wrapped up at some point next year latest post from developers hinterland gives a glimpse of what to expect in the latest episode you're going to be running away from a murderous gang of convicts around the rockies and the mountainous cold areas all in while trying to search for your estranged ex-wife there's going to be a brand new region that will be made available for survival players who just like the survival elements or have done the story. 
but the new episode will offer 7 to 10 hours of gameplay, 60 minutes of cinematics and 40 minutes of new music. And literally in the final stages, just bug fixing and localization. So it does look like it could be out before maybe the end of October. The new region, Black Rock region, won't be added though to the survival mode, maybe until just before the end of the year. On top of that, they are increasing the price. During its early access run and game preview, it was $20. Then it was $29.99 when it came out in early access. They are increasing it by another $5. And I've got to say, that's pretty fair. By now, if you don't own a Long Dark, well you should do, it's absolutely one of the best survival games out there. And so to get $5 more for something that's maybe offered a lost content, I think that's pretty decent. I think some may still have an issue with the fact they're still waiting for pretty much their product they paid for a good few years ago. But most people do agree that the survival sandbox elements are the best and the story isn't the reason why they bought the game. They did also finish off with a tease, saying that they're going to be working on survival mode even after they've finished the fifth episode and they're going to be adding mod support at last. So things are definitely on the up for the long dark and yeah I can't wait to actually finish this off. A game I've been mentioning maybe on and off in every new game video list of the year, Rift Breaker is finally coming to consoles. It's going to be hitting all platforms, Xbox, PlayStation, PC, maybe Switch, I've got to confirm that, on the 14th of October this year. It is a base building survival game with loads of obviously twin sticks shooting mechanics in it, fighting off all crazy manner of aliens and creatures as you try and keep them away from your base. So for sure I'm definitely going to give this a go, I think it will come at just a nice little time where there might not be much else happening and yeah I'm definitely down for splattering alien guts all over the planet. No Man's Sky Expeditions 3 is now live on all platforms. You can see a bunch of streamers playing this on Twitch right now because there are brand new Twitch drops enabled. I might even give it a go. Follow me on Twitch. So if you want to earn yourself some cool cosmetics for your game, go and check out Twitch on now and hopefully tune in some people actually trying it out. I do believe everyone who's playing it can enable some of the Twitch drops. Obviously this comes hot on the tails on the launch of Frontiers, the brand new civilization settlement building part of the game. It has been a bit underwhelming for me. You have to wait hours in between doing things to kind of get your settlement up to a certain standard. But it does add another element to a game that's been supported massively. I checked it out when it went live and streamed it. So go and check out that stream video. It's up on the YouTube channel still. The Expeditions is kind of like a separate little game mode that you can play with others. You've got challenges and tasks to perform while you're playing it and does give you a bunch of rewards, badges and all sorts of stuff. The Twitch Drops runs to the 13th of September and you can get all of these goodies by tuning in. If you want to see more about this, go also follow Survival Bob and Beeblebum. These two creators for No Man's Sky do a really good job of giving you all the lowdown and everything you come to expect. Beeblebum's still actually streaming on YouTube. I kind of hope he's doing it on Twitch too. Maybe he's just that little bothered or maybe he's not even on Twitch. So if you don't like Twitch but you still want to see what it's all about, go and check him out on YouTube. And I'm pretty sure that Survival Bob, who's got a fairly successful No Man's Sky YouTube channel alongside Ark, he'll be all over it on Twitch a bit later on as well. I am looking to do a hundred planets of No Man's Sky in the future, so look out for that maybe down the road. Also in the news this week, they've reached positive status finally on Steam for overall reviews. That's a huge achievement from where they were from, like easily 26% negative when they first come out because of the issues the game had five years ago. But over five years, they've clawed it back and pretty much for the last two and a half years, if you always look at the last 30 days, each and every review has been great, 90% and above. But it's only now that the overall score has finally gone into the mostly positive. That's a huge achievement and testament to the game. Despite it not being everyone's cup of tea, you can't deny the way they've gone above and beyond to keep their game fresh, updated, their community happy and repay the faith that some people still held all that time. Tribes of Midgard update news for you guys. I really enjoyed the game when it came out and obviously they've got some updates as it's a live service game. Their mid-season update or the mid-saga update is actually going forward on October the 5th. So slightly later than they originally said. This first mid update was meant to be taking place in September. So it will be hitting October. And then it's going to be a full update in November. If you don't know, Tribes of Midgard has a boss fight that you have to work towards. It's a whole part of the saga seasons. And these saga seasons pretty much change every four months or so. It's the main game mode of the actual Tribes of Midgard game. But they're not getting rid of the boss fight they have at the moment, which is basically Fenrun. They're going to be adding another one, so you'll have a choice in 
kind of taking on different creatures. So I really like that idea. They're also given a bit of info about what to expect. We've got new challenges, new runes, starter kits, and of course, all sorts of things going on with bug fixing, quality life, and optimizations. They are also adding a little bit more refinement to the combat and the blessings. It does look like they're going to be having a Halloween tie-in event, and they're also going to be changing the Fenra boss at the moment, his look at least. So expect some really spooky Halloween look. So yeah, it's probably a good idea. In the month of Halloween, it probably makes about right sense. Going through the tweets as well, you won't lose any of your current start kits or runes that you have, basically giving you tools to start a new saga with. You're just going to get more choice in what you can unlock. And anyone that's trying to get through the season pass, where it's not actually a paid season, but just a, a little chart for you to get unlocks, well, that progress is still going to be fine. It doesn't reset. That won't happen until the end or the start of the new season in maybe November, December. So this is pretty good stuff. I hope the challenges are a bit different and I do believe that maybe in the coming future with season two, it does look like hopefully they'll be working a bit more on survival mode too. I don't know, maybe that will come alongside it. I'm not sure, but it could definitely do with a big kick. Once you get through the first sort of 15 to 20 days of survival, it just becomes a thankless grind. I do love the game, I do like it, but there's players out there that have done the 100 day challenge and I've seen pretty much a lot of feedback saying it was great, but it was also really repetitive and boring towards the end. So anyway, they can mix things up, add new variables in there, even if it's swapping out lots of new bosses. They've recently done that with a recent update. They changed a bunch of stuff that I detailed last week a little bit. So it does look like they're on the case and they're willing to give things a go. So yeah, I'll be down for covering this for sure. Once it goes live, I'll be there to show you guys all of the latest stuff. We'll cover all the new start kits and runes. And eventually, I would like to try that 100 day survival challenge myself. Conan Exiles has already got a hot patch for PC and Game Pass on PC. So expect these to hit the Xbox and PlayStation within maybe the next couple of weeks, hopefully. I won't go into it too much detail. It's just a few hot fix and balancing stuff. But yeah, that will be going live for everyone very soon, hopefully. While we're here with Conan Exiles, something to do with Funcom, where the hell is Chop Chop? There has absolutely been no word about this game ever since last year in December. It was meant to come early 2021 and that's after two delays before it. Now originally they did add some time to the development of the game so they could add proper co-op play to the game. I believe they were only having it as just local co-op at first and online was going to be added a bit later. But it does look like that is fully online multiplayer now as well. But there has been absolutely nothing about this game ever since at that time. I've tried broaching it with the comms teams at Funcom before and they pretty much just say oh when we got news we'll deliver it. Which kind of sucks really considering it's been so long now. It's well skipped past the early 2021 marker. What's so weird is they gave a bunch of press access to this game last year so it did seem like it was going to be released fairly soon. But they're so reluctant to just let the actual community that may be a little bit hyped and excited about a new co-op dungeon crawler game. I do believe this started out almost as a joke when they did it as a April Fool's Day. And it's pretty much mixing the world of Conan Exiles, not Conan Barbarian, but the actual Conan Exiles game. Giving it a little bit of a mix and a twist and obviously adding in that kind of Castle Crashers RPG style atmosphere to it. So you will be running around all sorts of dungeons, facing all sorts of creatures and monsters you've come to expect from the Exile Lands, all in a 2D roguelike Zelda-ish game, as the description just said there. You can buy weapons, you can get upgrades, and it does look like it has got some RPG elements where you can load in certain things for your characters. So yeah, it looks fun, it looks silly. It's not a full-blown survival game, but I actually like games like this a lot. So yeah, I'm definitely interested in playing it once Funcom pull their finger out and actually tell people what's going on with it. If anyone knows any different, do let me know. And hopefully it won't be too much longer before we actually see this game or hear news whether or not it's just been abandoned. One to keep your eyes on in the future, Sky. This game is going to be an early access survival game and it is set in the Isle of Sky, which is like north, north near Scotland. But not only that, it is going to be kind of like a Viking game, I do believe as well, or some sort of a uh, pickish game. You can clearly see a lot of this does look like it's more Celtic or Viking. It's going to have a 16 square kilometer map with the pre-alpha forests, snowy mountaintops, as well as lush plains. It is a typical survival game. You're going to need food, water to make sure that you survive and you will be able to build bases or at least shelters anyway. It says here you'll be able to construct a large array of both pre-built upgradable structures, modular wood and stone constructions and late game entire towns and villages. 
This caught my eye actually on Instagram. I saw an advert for it. So it did the job. Well done. And yeah, it does look really interesting. I'm going to switch out to the developers and see if hopefully I can get a little bit of an exclusive look or talk with them about the game in the future. And yeah, keep your eyes on this. It does look absolutely gorgeous. And just a quick one about Seven Days to Die. It looks like tonight they're going to be actually streaming with the co-founders of the game on the FUBAR Twitch channel. He's a developer, but he's also a streamer as well. And that's going to be at 9pm CST time to see what's going ahead with the PC version. Now you guys should know, I don't really care too much about what's going on with the PC version because I kind of refuse to play it until we actually get some better resolution for consoles. Recently, if you hadn't caught up on the saga, they re-released some PS4 versions in lots of gaming stores in the UK and America and pretty much around the world, but it didn't contain any new content, despite descriptions in all of them stating it had electricity as well as a bunch of other stuff. Well, it looks like they finally got through to someone at Game, the digital store in the UK that was selling it, plus a bunch of others as well. And even in store, they've been selling this same version as the re-release and they've updated it. They've removed the electricity parts from the store description. It now just lists vehicles, which is kind of still a bit shitty because there's still only technically one vehicle you can have. But I'll let that slide. That was all I was trying to highlight when I found out about this re-release was that it was false advertising. It was telling people. They actually did sell out before the game was re-released because of that reason. So I'm not saying you might want to hit up the Twitch stream and say free JPG from Discord since they banned me when I brought it up in their Discord. Some moderators let the power go to their head for sure. But we could maybe offer them congratulations on finally resolving the mix-up that they caused and maybe didn't take enough care with. And they could have maybe responded in a better way than just simply putting out a crap statement on their forums from one of their moderators. My last gripe is, man, what is with these developers only catering to American crowds? Like, sure, it might be after a long day of doing their time at work, but they're streaming about their work, they're doing something with work, and they're doing it at 9pm CST time. That's like 3 o'clock in the morning in the UK, 4 o'clock in other parts of Europe. So that is ridiculous. And I've done this in the past as well. They don't really offer any kind of friendly streams for actual anyone else other than Americans. All right, maybe Canadians and Aussies as well. You get some benefits, but you know what I'm saying. Most developers that do streams do them early in the morning in their Northern American time, or at least at some point approaching reasonable in Europe. Otherwise, I would totally join and ask them a few solid questions. Maybe you guys can do that for me. The main one being, are they going to offer a free upgrade path or some sort of discount upgrade for players that own the old version of the game for the new brand new version that's going to be appearing on next gen only you should know by now they're not updating the old version of the game anymore they're focusing on the port for the new generation of consoles i've covered this a bunch of times i'm not going to end deeper than that go and check out the rest of the videos but yeah might be worth asking that solid sensible question as i've yet to address that and we're probably not too far off maybe in the next sort of nine to twelve months we could see that port coming Otherwise, if you do want to see the glimpse of what's to come possibly in the future for consoles, then at least you will be up to date with what's going on. I do feel a little bit of resentment that I can't sometimes cover the game because I do feel like I've helped deliver to you, the guys, the news on consoles so much about this. And although I play plenty of other PC games, I've always concentrated and centered on delivering you guys console news too. That's where I started and it's still where I prefer to play whenever I get a chance. If I get the option, I always choose a console key over a PC. But facts are facts, games offer like this always first on PC. So who knows, maybe I will get around to trying it out when it's fully done on PC. So at least I can keep you guys in loop. Because despite a lot of comments that you guys support and show, I do know so many of you don't really care and you're just willing to pay whatever it is to get the new version of 7 Days to Die in your hands on an Xbox or PlayStation. And that's cool too, you do you. But for many, I know they really feel like you don't want to support this developer in anything they do in the future. If they can't come up with some sort of halfway measure to help out old fans of the game on the older gen consoles, kind of get something from the next version that comes out. And finishing off with the turn to Nangarim, which is a dwarven survival game where you'll be literally going around, I think, building dungeons or exploring dungeons, all in a really rich detailed world of dwarves. 
This is something pretty unusual. I think I saw Splattercat Gaming take a look at this a couple of weeks ago. So definitely want to give it a try for myself. And yeah, it looks like it's on PC Steam right now. Or it's going to be coming to early access soon. And yeah, you've got all sorts of stuff here. Like the weapons and armors look pretty good. Again, the world looks really lush. It's got definitely a nice environment to it. So yeah, I want to check this out for sure. And it is a typical survival game. I'll bet with probably more emphasis on crafting and making sure you're prepared before you possibly go and explore more dungeons and stuff. Small indie team as you kind of expect. And you are going to have to repair some of the pathways that you go along to explore a little bit more. So I like the looks of this one. If you want to become a diggy diggy hole dwarf, craft all sorts of things like a basic spoon, then this game may be the one for you. It doesn't look like it's got heavy simulation on that side of things as you go around exploring parts of the cold so yeah lots of enemies and creatures lots of flying spiders i'm going to check this out in the future as soon as i get a chance to and there we go that is the survival show done and dusted today like i said i'm planning another one on saturday hopefully i'm sure there'll be a bunch of news we've got the playstation uh showcase going on tomorrow and although i'm not really expecting too much in terms of survival you never know hopefully i'll be surprised until next time, Ratbags, I'll catch you later.